From the war abroad, let's turn now to our homegrown battle against illegal immigration. Unless you're a politician in Washington, you don't really need a dope like me to tell you that illegal immigration is bad for our national security, hurts American workers, and puts a tremendous strain on our social services. Then, if I say that, there will be people who will respond and call me an insensitive hate monger because he just doesn't care about immigrants or try to better their lives. Well, unfortunately for you, the real story tonight is illegal immigration is now shown to significantly hurt Mexican families, especially mothers and children. Yeah, and even as a conservative, I've got a problem with that. It's a common misconception that immigrant families come to this country together in search of a better life. Mm, not so much. A new study now shows that the majority of the Mexicans who immigrate, usually illegally, are husbands and fathers who leave their families behind. As a result, there is a tremendously high rate of divorced mothers and now emotionally disturbed children in these broken Mexican families. Maybe it's just me. But I think a family that struggles together is far richer than a family that prospers apart. Experts have also found that many young boys drop out of high school and drop out of school altogether in Mexico to follow their fathers to the United States. Being raised without fathers is taking a national toll in Mexico. Especially tragic because the family has always been a cultural cornerstone of Mexican life. Mexican single mothers are now being forced to raise a new generation of uneducated, disenfranchised, angry young men. Kind of sounds like a recipe for disaster that's boiling over in the Middle East, doesn't it? Don't think we need it here at home as well. The wives of those illegals who have been abandoned have now started a website. They call themselves, their words not mine, Wetback Wives. They, they post letters on the website and good wishes to husbands that they haven't seen in months, sometimes even years. They've even begun posting pleas to our government to send their men home. One woman wrote, quote, close the border, send our men home to us even if you must deport them. The study is being presented now to the Mexican Congress. I believe it's in April, and I pray that this will finally spur some action to close the border and stop the rampant illegal immigration. But you and I know that ain't gonna happen. Out of all of the arguments against illegal immigration, the preservation of families may be the most important one yet. Dan Stein, president from the Federation of American Immigration Reform, give me a thumbnail sketch of what's happening to families in Mexico. Well, they're being split apart. They're being split apart by the fact that young men come up here, frankly, most men between the ages of 20 and 50 in many of these villages, particularly less educated, they're up here, they're working, they're sending money back home. But the mothers don't know what's happened to them, the wives don't know what's happened to them, they stay up here for some time. And the economics of this thing, Glenn, are that if you're sending money back to the village, that money then drives up costs for everybody then everybody has to send somebody up to, the, to El Norte, to the U.S., and suddenly it's, it, it basically is a matter of pride and moral virtue. You've got to come here illegally and work to send money back home. Pretty soon all you've got are mothers and children and people over 50, and you basically destroy entire communities that way. So, Dan, here we are um, destroying towns in Mexico, uh, no jobs. I mean, you're, you're, you're hurting because as a town dis is destroyed, people move away. There's no jobs in the towns for those who are remaining. We're taking their greatest resource, their youth. Right. We're dooming them to a life of poverty because they're leaving school and not getting an education. How is it that people with my point of view that illegal immigration is bad are being painted as the ones without any compassion? I, look, Glenn, it is astounding to see Democrats in Congress, people who claim to care about poor in this country or in Mexico, pushing the cheap labor agenda on behalf of major corporations. We see these swelling corporate profits while U.S. workers are not getting their fair share of the increase in productivity for their labor. They're flooding the market with illegal alien labor in this country. And you see wages stagnating, dropping, deep poverty rates growing in major states around the country, the split up of, um, of families in Mexico, and a corrupt, extortionate Mexican government with monopolies and everything else pushing people out of their own country to maintain a corrupt regime and somehow our political system is complicit in a process when the average American cannot understand why the system won't work. But see, it's, I mean, what, what kills me is 
this is bad for them. It's yeah. bad for us. Exactly. I mean, it's it, this is what we're doing is we are enabling Mexico to continue to be corrupt, to be con to to be con to continue down the road that they have been going down. You know what it reminds me of is when you are on a ship uh, and it starts to sink and they put the lifeboats out. After a while, they won't come. They'll fill the boat, and then you get away from the people because other people will sink the boat you're on. That's what's happening. We are letting so many people come in. They're taking our services. They're going to sink our lifeboat. Then everybody's in trouble. Yeah, look, there's a consensus in this country among the people that we need to control our borders, hammer employers, we need a work document, verification, interior enforcement, detention, deportation. If you don't play by the rules, you don't play the game, roll back overall immigration, give American workers a chance to research some bargaining leverage, and make Mexico take back the people who ought to be the positive agents for political and social change, to make, to make it attractive for foreign investment, to actually develop a stable political and economic system. Look at, look at Cuba. If everybody who disagrees with a guy like Fidel Castro lives in Florida, where are the agents to bring about real political change? And the extreme case, of course, is Cuba. But the same principle applies in Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, any government that systematically encourages people to leave. Dan, thank you very much. Appreciate you. your time. Um, you know. There's two ways to go. We could either fix the problem of illegal immigration or we could find some way to cash in. What could we come up with? Tired of the same old vacation? Then pack your bags and head for Migrant Mountain. Yes, you and your family can now experience all the thrills and excitement that come with illegal border crossing. You'll climb over fences, climb under fences, climb through fences. And if you're lucky, you might even get shot at. And while you're here, don't forget to cool off in our brand new water park with attractions the whole family can enjoy. Migrant Mountain. Who knew breaking the law could be this much fun? This is Glenn Beck.